All right, so let me recap a couple of things that I remember from last time. Number one, uh, even if he hits you, his stand stuff, dynamic entry, silent entry, no real mix-up because the low is too slow from, uh, what is it, silent entry? Is that silent entry? Send? Yeah, so that's a uh, silent entry, right? Oops, I gotta switch sides on now. Alright. So yeah, the low is too slow, right? 22 frames, which is not seeable as far as frame data goes, but it's a lot slower than uh, his mid options. So he has to delay. So the thing about that is when he delays it, he fucks himself over. If he wants to, like, make it a mix-up. Yeah, if he puts any sort of delay, it's too risky for him. So, it just seems really gimmicky. You might be able to catch people, but it's so risky because the low is super launch punishable, right? Oh, negative 13? That's not right. Negative 13? That's not right. What? This is a launch punishable? Holy shit, I didn't know. This used to be launch punishable, right? This used to be launch punishable, I thought. Wow, I didn't even know. <laughs> so we're starting with a surprise here. That's okay. I don't think it was. This is apparently negative 13, so... I thought it was lost punishable. Still, point being, just low period then, right? <clears throat> and then he gets to juggle on counter for that, which... How often is that gonna happen? It's not tag 2 or whatever. Alright, and uh, his lows are all super risky, like his best low poke is down back 4, but it's like negative 20, I know that. 4-4-4-3 uh, four, 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 is also good, but once again, it's just like negative 20 something. It's really bad on block. And then he has like down back 1-3, which is a natural combo, negative 1, he could go into crouch also out of it with negative 1. But once again, it's low high, launch punishable. And then he has like, what is it, 1-4, which is kind of whatever, right? Although he does have generic down 4, which is good, which is always good. I've been over this a million times. If you have generic down 4, you're going to want to use it. And his looks like it has more range than usual, actually. 12 frame low, baby. Either way it goes, yeah. And then he can do the poking game with down forward 1. Uh, that, the back 2 moves, back 2-3 and back 2-1, key moves in my opinion. This is natural combo back to one and no matter how much you delay it it combos natural combo normal hit so you can hit confirm this now the uh the high is safe on block but it's high it could be duck the thing about the high though is you have to commit to it no hit confirm you cannot delay it at all you have to input back uh two three right away so either way it goes Really good shit at the wall, and I was recommending using back two three at the wall because it's the same. It's a little slower. Back two is sixteen. A lot of people use forward two four, which is twelve, right? But when you think about it, forward two four is negative thirteen on block, and could still be ducked. What is it? Uh, yeah. Negative twelve. Excuse me. Negative twelve on block, and you could still duck it and launch him. So if you want to come into something at the wall and you don't mind it being a little slower, you'll get the uh, back to uh, three, which is a mid high instead of a high high. At the very least, if they do block it, it's not as bad. Negative eight with pushback. It's not as bad, right? 
And in both instances, they could duck and launch you if you uh, just mindlessly toss it out there. So uh, another thing where I left off was I was I was uh, talking about the forward forward moves. Forward forward two, you can mix up with forward forward four. And because they're forward forward moves, they realign. They don't track, but they do realign. So they don't well, they don't track naturally, but because they realign, the opponent will have to change up their sidestep timing, which you could change up by adding a little bit more of a dash. That's a little too much. Yeah. You could do it instantly, or you could take a little step. You could take like a half a step or a full step. In both instances, they'll have to sidestep late, basically. And the forward forward two naturally mixes up with the low. So it's high risk, but he has that. That's nice. Every time he approaches forward, the opponent has to think, oh, 50-50 might be coming, basically. Anytime he's dashing. So that's a nice little little, little thing he has in his uh, in his neutral to mix people up. It's risky, though, so, but you don't have to come into that, obviously, but it's there. Um, okay, I talked about this move last time. It's a uh, counter hit juggle starter. Negative 10 with pushback. Whoops, I keep forgetting he has that. Yeah, counter hit juggle starter. You go into, what was it, dynamic entry. Uh, yeah, that's dynamic entry, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a whatever. I mean, I'm sure he has better options than that, but that's a pretty decent pickup, an easy pickup. All right, so that was the last move I talked about. I think, yeah, I did mention this move last time, but I don't remember if I really, oh, I did talk about this move, so. Yeah, this is a decent move to like, it's always nice to have an approaching low. Uh, there's a lot of startup to this though, and it is launch punishable. Like, I've been historically really bad at blocking this, but this shit has 29 frames of startup. Like, is that right? No, sorry. 19 frames. The uh, the bot is fucking with me. 29 on the second hit. So yeah, this isn't really this isn't really sealed. So this is just decent. This is pretty good. It's super risky though for an approaching low. It's not like Dragonov's quarter circle forward three is now. It used to be worse, but quarter circle for his, his quarter circle forward three now is only negative 14. This shit is like negative wasn't 16 set or whatever. Negative 16 on block, so it's a lot riskier. By the way, it goes, uh, it does hit grounded and. Opponents face up, right? And the cool thing is, uh, the first one floats him in the air, the second one still hits them. For decent damage. See, if anybody says grounded and gets hit by the first one, the second hit will more than likely connect for 18 damage because they stayed grounded. If you want to compare that to like his stomp, it does more damage. Stomp is 16. So it's nice to have, you know, it's risky, but it's nice to have an approaching low. If, if, they will, if they're on the floor, if they hold back, it'll probably run up and catch up to them. So they'll still have to duck to block it. So yeah, that's a decent move. I don't like the way a lot of Lars players use it. Like the random Lars players online, they use it really in a really silly way that should be blocked if I didn't suck, but. They're like, oh, you know, let me just try to sneak in a low from way back here. And it's like, no, there's more uses to it than that. Um, by the way, how's the audio coming out? Is the levels okay with my music? Left thing is overpowering the other? Whatever, the voice is more important, but still. Let me know if it's like weird. Because I can't tell, man. All right. So next we got forward back 2-1. I mentioned this. 14 frame mid juggle starter with decent range. So about a back dash worth of range. A little bit more than a back dash. Just a tiny bit more. Yeah, basically, just about a back dash worth of range. A little tiny bit more if I take a step back instead of a back dash. Um, 14 frames, super unsafe on block. Negative 18 on block. Does not force cross despite it being like a downward punch. So, yeah, and he's like right in your face when you block it. 
There is no shadow blocking this. So be ready to launch him if you ever block this. And if you're using this as a large player, you need to be careful because it's bad on block. Right? Okay. I don't think there's any real tracking with this. And the second hit follows. Wow. Yeah, the second hit follows. Wow. And it still bounce. That's a nice bonus. Huh. Yeah, that second hit really comes after you. Try to stair step. I've never been good at stair stepping. I need to cheat and get a hitbox. I'll be better at it. Or it. Or play on pad. Okay, well, I don't know if you can stair step it. I always if you're against Lars and you think this is coming for whatever reason. Step guard. I think. I mean, step guard seems to be solid in general versus Lars. It just won't stop the down back four, I guess, which is whatever. I gotta scroll down. So that's forward back two one. In full screen mode, you can't minimize while everything going fucking black for a bit. It's annoying. Okay, next is while running three. His has a funky little unique animation. Plus eight, according to RB Norway. Uh, that's while standing three. Uh, plus eight to plus fourteen, right? Yeah, variable frame date, of course. A lot of active frames. There he goes, plus fourteen. It's about the best it could get, but the more f plus frames he got, the further away they're blocking it from, and it pushes back, so. It's like plus 14, what do you do, but. Plus 14 guard, by the way. You could take a guard during that. It's not a guard break. Yeah. You want to block this and be up close in their face like this. And you can force whatever mix up you want for the most part, right? Let's see. He does have a 15 frame low that if they try to crush, I'll show you right now. This should be the case for Lars, right? Ugh, sloppy inputs. So if I mash uh, any low crush, right? See? No low crush for me, right? Nope. Won't be able to hold up forward. Yeah, see? Too fast. That's why uh, having at least a... I almost want to call it decent, but it's not decent. Down 3-1 is kind of whatever. But it is a 15 frame low with a counter hit follow-up attached... Not follow-up, but... With a uh, counter hit combo attached to it, right? Down 3 1. So you could use it in situations like this if you feel like people are getting too crazy with their low crushes when you're at at least plus 7, I believe it is. And in this case, we get to plus 8 or better, so you're gonna go with that. Alright, so next. Oh, yeah, and like as far as tracking goes, it's like any other while running move. Uh, you gotta like step it. I mean, it's. It's not super like, um, yeah, this shit has like no real tracking. Yeah, like none of that. You saw how early I stepped. What's up, Sub-Zero? Why is what not that great? Down 3-1? I mean, because the reward is shitty. 
And it's low high, so you could risk a launch punish. That's why. Right? So, to give you another example, Dragonov's down 413. Yeah, Dragonov's down 413 also starts at 15 frames. Down 4 for Dragonov's 15 frames. And it all combos on counter. And not only that, you can actually counter hit confirm because he gets a unique animation when it counter hits. Right? But it, he always has to go into the 1 at the very least, which is a high. And down 413 for Dragonov is low, high, high. And unsafe on block. I think it's like negative 13. So, but at the end of the day, that's a much better reward on counter hit than this is. You get what I'm saying? So, I mean, like, what is this? Uh, 23 damage plus 4. I mean, plus 4 says only 23 damage. I'm just like, I'm just like informing you that it's an option if you notice. If you're running a long set and you're noticing that people are like, like, if you go low on a certain person, let's say you're going for this a lot, right? Because I tell you what, in, in, uh, even in a plus A situation, I'll be able to crush that. Let me record that for you. Bad inputs, man. Bad inputs. Right? See? Because you're thinking, oh, plus eight, that's like plus a thousand, whatever. Then I'm going to swing. So let me go for a low here, you know? And then they'll crush you, right? But you got to remember that any crush, high or low, needs X amount of frames to crush. Some faster than others. Uh, in the case of Lars, he doesn't seem to have any particularly, like, fast crushes. You know, maybe that. That's like some dumb shit. It's not like a move. Oops, I forgot I gotta block it first. Yeah, see? Nope, not even that for him. That dumb flippy shit. So, you know, that's just another option you could think about. Once again, for Dragonov, when he connects his 12 frame punish, 4 1, that's plus 7, I think, or plus 8, and he's right in your face. Same thing. He could do down 4 if you try to low crush him. With most low crushes. Uh, okay, so yeah. Uh, next we got so that's why I'm running three. Next we got the while standing moves. All right, so while standing one is 15 frame launcher, which is it's unusual for it to be a while standing one. Most while standing launchers are like while standing twos, you know. While standing ones don't tend to be launchers, but his is. And then I mentioned this last time, but you could hold forward to go into silent entry, which switches sides, and then you could do like silent entry three or whatever for the juggle. You don't have to. You could totally just do the juggle like this. It probably will not be as good of a juggle, but you know, you could do either or. And if he blocks the while standing one, you cannot go into silent entry. If you hold forward, nothing happens. It's just negative 12 and that's the end of it, right? I gotta loosen up this uh, wrist thing. Whew, that shit hurts. Oh, I forgot to tweet this, didn't I? Wow, well, whatever. I'm new to Twitter. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I do believe this... Um, he has a low... Does he have a low... Oh, I know how to test his tracking. I put him at negative one. Right? There it is. Yeah, that puts him at negative one crouching. Okay, so that definitely... Okay, yeah. I had a feeling. Definitely tracks the Lars' left side. So that's that for that move. Uh, how's the range look on this? Range looks okay. I don't know how it would be for punishing, like... Uh, tip lows, you know what I'm saying? Like those lows where you block them at the tip, but they're like negative 17. He does have that, I guess. Right, so... 
Yeah, so negative 17, right? That looks, that looks good, though. Even if I were to block this to tip. Yeah. Good hitbox, good range. So yeah, solid while standing punisher. So, uh, while standing launcher. Itchy. Alright, next we got while standing 2, which is the start of his 13 frame while standing punish. Which would be while standing 2, 1. I know this force is crouch. Plus 2, force crouch. Uh, so the wall standing two by itself is also plus two, apparently. Does not force crouch. And then you go wall standing two, uh, wall standing two forward to go into, uh, is that? Yeah, you can hold forward to go into silent entry. And when you hold forward to go into silent entry, you're at plus six, according to RB Norway. Let's see, that's uh, 14. Uh... Uh, six. Oh, 22 minus six is what, 14? Uh, yeah. Silent is when he's low to the ground like that. Dynamic is that. And when you do dynamic, you can hold down to go into dynamic entry. And when you do, he uh, makes, he moves backwards only. And he makes all this space. He's at negative one, apparently. According to RB Norway, he's at negative one. But that doesn't matter because look at the space he just created. So, I guess this is just a way for him to back off and it's like, alright, I want to, like, get this guy off of me, so I'm just going to go do this, and even if they block it, so what, right? That's my guess. Because, according to RB Norway, on block, it's negative 12, which, with that much space that he creates, that doesn't matter. It's like, good luck punishing that, you know? So, that that's how I would use that move. I want to use, I want to use this, this, uh, uh dynamic entry. Which is really dynamic exit in this case. I would not use this with any sort of mix-up in mind. I would use it as a way to like back off, get some space between me and the opponent, so I could like catch a quick breather, think about what I'm gonna do next, or maybe just sit on a lead, just like ba, just like just like you know, ba, back off, wait and wait here, and then you know get something ready if they whiff. So yeah. Uh, but while standing too forward, I wanted to test. Uh, Twenty two hours six equals sixteen. Uh that's one. Hmm. Damn it. He doesn't have a sixteen frame. Oh he does. Okay. Wait, no, that's it crushes, it crushes. Oh fuck. Um. And I, I can't do the test I wanted to do. Well, let's see. I, can, I, can't, I can't test the frame perfect, but I can at least get an idea of if it's plus 5, right? By doing this. Last 12. Yeah, he's breathing out a jab. So at least plus five. So I think the plus six is probably right here in this instance. Uh, while steady two forward on block is only negative five, but I don't think he can block any. Yeah, no, he can't. Who do I main? A magic fat guy. Good name. I don't have a main right now, so my main is dead, Marduk. I'm just going through every character right now and going through their move list to learn and help other people learn in the process, hopefully. <clears throat> so yeah, I guess if I were to pick a main right now, it maybe would be Geese, I guess, but I haven't even played Geese in a while. I was playing a lot of Kazumi recently. So anyway, um, what was I think? Uh, yeah, so that's while standing to 
Uh, while standing 2 1 on counter hit. Oops. The second hit on counter hit has a uh, knockdown. That's not free. That's guaranteed. So the stomp is not free there. I'm going to guess that the stomp, if you want to block the stomp there. Right? You're probably going to have to tap, like we found out next time, thanks to, like we found out last time, thanks to Doomshine. You probably have to tap back and then hold down back. Yeah, see? If I just hold down back, let's see what happens. Oh, okay, no, it doesn't work, okay. So it's not like the thing from last time where you had to tap back and hold down back. Like the armor move, that's what it was. Let me recap that real quick. Uh, yeah, there it is. That armor move, the stomp is not guaranteed, right? Like it seems like it is. Because if you hold down back, that's what happens. So, if you just try to hold down back right now, it hits you. But if you tap back to get up and then down back, which is awkward at time, you block it. Because you're tapping back to do the backwards wake up, and then you're canceling the backwards wake up into a crouch jab. Because apparently, in that situation, in uh, face down, head towards, I guess that's just the fastest way to get up. This may not be the case for all situations when you're on the floor, right? but it is for this one. What's up, Sky uh, Psycho Ninja? Why do people talk shit about this character so much? Um, what do you mean by talk shit? Like saying he sucks or saying that they hated him? All right, well, there's a couple of ways uh, things you had to consider. First of all, I'm not a fan of him, right? And uh, I'll ham it up to joke around and shit, but I really dislike this character. I don't like the way he looks. I think he looks stupid. He looks like a fucking Swedish guy trying to be a weeb with the fucking Gatsby hair gel. I think he just looks really lame, right? Then they, they set him up in Tekken 6 to be like the new main character, basically. I think they like kind of walked that back now, though. Up to this point, you could consider, you could pretty much consider Kazuya and Jin to be back to being the main characters. In this game specifically, story-wise, Kazuya is probably the main character when you really think about it. But that's beside the point. Um... Then they were like, alright, we want to make up this fucking cool-looking, like, anime-ass superhero shit. Like a Sentai character, you know. Which looks really lame to me. That's just a personal preference thing. But then, to top all that off, especially with my dislike about him, he was incredibly strong in Tekken 6 and even better in Tag 2. So, all that shit, that annoying shit, you top it off with that. And then you get the whole concept of like the players, the people, a lot of the people that play when you run to online, they're like the law players. They're the ones that like, they want to do the cool shit and show off. They'll go out of the way to try to win the match with shit like this, or they'll do the stomp and then the pose and shit. So they go out of the way to make you extra butt hurt on top of all that other shit. So people who play Lars are bitches. <laughs> Lars is a bitch. And he used to be super cheap. So am I shedding tears that he's like considered like whack in this game? No. Never. He could never be good again as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, uh, I don't think he's like complete trash though like a lot of other people do in this game. I think he's definitely below average. That's what I would place Because at the end of the day, he still can do some decent damage. He still has a 14 frame solid whiff punishing launcher. With a 14 frame block punishing launcher also at that. You know? He still has a solid full cross mix up. He still has this which is really good. It's just, it's just one of those situations where a lot of characters do what he does, and they do it better. That's, that's really what it is. That's what makes him bad in this game. So I hope that answers uh, your questions. <laughs> anyway, back to Lars. So we're talking about uh, while standing moves here. By the way, uh, feel free to ask, like always, feel free to ask anything Tekken related. I, and if I can't help you out well, it doesn't have to be about Lars. You guys know what's up. But just in case anybody doesn't. If I know the answer, I'll help you guys out. Alright, uh... And if I don't know the answer, if it's a quick find, I'll be glad to look it up. We were just talking about the while standing 2. So, uh, while standing 2 uh, into the 1... What was it? The stop was not guaranteed. You don't, you, don't, you don't even need to do the get up trick that showed before. You just need to hold down back. So, what is probably guaranteed is like a down 3. Because it's fast. Or a down 4. What's more damage? 8... Seven, so down three. Down four might probably wouldn't even hit. 
right? So we're gonna record this again, right? And then down three. So if you get the second hit on counter hit, yeah, see? Let's try the other way. Tap back, hold down back. Yep, that's guaranteed. Down three, 100% guaranteed. And uh, let me turn on his hit data. Uh, display. I like this music. Just gonna pump this music up just a little bit. Just a little bit. All right. Um, where the hell is CPU opponent attacking from? There he goes. Display. All right. There he goes. So yeah, six damage. He tacks on after the uh, counter hit. Uh, so 26 total damage. Oh, down forward apparently does work too, but you'll get 26 total damage, which is whatever. So on block. This is uh, negative 13. I think, or negative 12, sorry. Force crouch. Negative 13, it would suck if it was negative 13. Holy shit. I don't know, wrong button. Yeah, see, he blocked the 13 frame. While standing four connects. Uh, I don't have a 12 frame to test, but. We can be sure that that's probably right. Uh. Yeah, so it's negative 12 here. Force crouch, okay? So remember that. Next we got while standing three. Ah, this move. It's one of the rare instances of a character having a high at a while standing. He still has up four three. It's weird that he has two up forward launchers. I mean, yeah, he always had that. He always had orbital to go with up forward three. Anyway, um... While standing three was 20, 30 damage. Wow, that's good damage. It comes out at 20 frames, so it's not really like a block punish. This is one of those you catch people's, like, for example, people swing with a jab after this. You'll clip them with that, and if they block it, he's still plus seven. But notice the pushback, so remember that, right? I'll give you an example of how Lars players definitely like to use his move. They'll do one of those there that he could transition into crouch. Like a standing three down transitions to crouch with the same frame data as a standing three if he doesn't hold down, right? So that's negative 12? Is that negative 12? Yeah, it's negative 12, so he goes under your punish, but hey, he'll get hit by the second hit. I mean, see, if I were to try to do like a one two, ah, the one two catches him. But definitely if he hits me too. See? Ah, he loses out to that though. Loses out to that. Exchange to a 15 frames. I don't know how I feel about that. At least it knocks down. But the best way to probably use that as like a gimmicky thing is off of the low, I think. Because that low is negative one. Okay, so the one two will still catch you. What about the forward two four? Oh. Wow, the startup gets caught. All right, but if I'm a little bit slow, or if I just go for a one jab, yeah. If I'm a little bit slow, bam, that'll nail me, right? And if I do nothing, you know, still at plus seven. But like I said, be careful of what you swing at, uh, what you swing with. For example, you might think, oh. 15 frame, uh, sorry, there it is. 15 frame counter hit move. Well, let's see how this works out. Oops. You might think, let me set up a 15 frame counter hit move after he blocks it, right? Well, I'm trying to see if I could. Oh, wow, that actually keeps you in serious block stun. But yeah, I had a feeling because of the spacing. I, I thought I would be able to backdash it, but his back four actually covers uh, a lot of space. But still, you're thinking plus seven, you could still get sidestep because uh, there's a lot of space here. 
if you were at like plus seven right in his face, it'd be a different story. For example. That's plus eight, right? Let's see what happens here if I try to sidestep. Never mind that. <laughs> That's just super linear. Alright, so in this case, not a good example. If this were Dragonov, back four would all of a sudden be tracking. Because Dragonov is cheap. Uh, looks a bit like a backswing blow. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, not only does it have a lot of blocks done, that back three actually moves him forward a lot, which is great because it's not like, for example, Katarina's down forward four. You know the Katarina 1 1 2 on block setup with the down forward four because 1 1 2 on block is plus seven. But it creates a similar spacing situation so with Lars is while standing three. The thing about Katarina, her down forward four need does not cover anywhere near as much range. Lars moves forward, I just realized that. If Lars didn't move forward with this, You'd probably be able to backdash that shit easily in that situation. So, that's a nice little, like, thing for Lars, I guess. Even though you lose the old 15 frame counter hit move. The old down forward two that everybody's freaking crying about. Um, but yeah, whatever. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess, uh, you know, just point being, if they block up while standing um, three, and you're like, oh, plus seven, you can do the back four, but they'll, they, I, I thought they'd be able to backdash. They can't. Maybe some characters can't. But they'll definitely be able to sidestep it unless it's like Jack, probably, or Gigas. Or Kuma, maybe. I don't know. But most of the cast will definitely be able to sidestep that shit. So, be mindful of that. You can totally like, just make them block it and then see, kind of see what they do and you backdash. Why, you know, why do you why do you have to be the aggressor at plus seven? You could totally backdash, right? And you know what's the cool thing about that? That might make them think, oh shit. Maybe he's actually negative at that. Because there's a lot of moves that cause this sort of blocks and that are actually negative. You'd be surprised. Uh, so, like, maybe they'll chase down because, oh, you're like, you backed off twice in a row after it. Let me chase him down. And then that's when, you know, throw it out. Easy peasy. Alright, so next we got... We incest the trap. Yeah, so no tracking at all on that. Which is another thing. Be careful with that kind of setup. We know that while standing one has your left side covered. We incest while standing two either. Let me do that now. Mm. While standing two looks like it tracks really well. Yeah. While standing two tracks really well. For sure. So, it's covered, man. Uh, no counter hit properties, it looks like. Can you roll that knockdown back? Yes, you can. What about on counter hit? Yeah, okay. So, if they don't hold back, you get a free something. I don't know. Oh, forward, forward. Yeah, so that's guaranteed if they don't hold back. If they do hold back. That's a bad move to whiff if they hold back. <laughs> so be careful. Uh, Alright, um... Next, we got wall standing four, standard 11 frame wall standing four. There doesn't seem to be anything special about his. This is plus five on hit and on counter hit 16 damage. Let's see how his tracks. The animation looks bad. 
It looks like the kind of animation that would whiff in a lot of float situations. Like a slide. Alright, so no tracking on this while standing four either, which is also unfortunate. I feel like I might be wrong, but I feel like a lot of generic while standing fours track to at least one side. Huh, maybe not. Alright, well next we got one of the key moves. So one of the complaints about Lars for Lars players, right? Weaknesses is he's lacking in low pokes, right? Well he does have one important low poke that doesn't get him slaughtered slaughtered on block. And that's the shoe shine, right? The full crouch. The caveat being you have to be in full crouch to use it. What's up, King of Zay? I was watching uh, Toker 2 earlier, and you're exactly right. Someone slid right under that move when he did it. <laughs> Go figure. You can kind of see that, right? Like, you know, it just looks bad, right? It's like, once again, I'll bring a dragon off. You could, look, you could look at the animation of this and, like, a dragon off while standing four. You could tell, yeah, that while, dragon off while standing four, way better hitbox, right? Uh, and you just look at this little, like, it looks like he's trying to toe kick, like, doing the Jin forward four kick, except upward <laughs> to the face. It doesn't look like it should hit mid, right? I'll probably duck this from the tip range. So, yeah, I mean, you know, that's one thing you have to consider as a large player. If you're going to mindlessly throw out while standing fours from, like, spaced, maybe don't do that, right? If you're going to throw out a mid from space, maybe just consider while standing two by itself, because at least you get the option of backing off, you know, with uh, holding down. With a dynamic entry or dynamic exit, I'll call it. You know, shit like that. You have that option. So, if you're gonna, like I said, and it has more range. It does move forward a bit. Yeah, see, way more range. Look at this. Yeah, it's out of range. Uh -huh. Yeah, see, way more range on the wall standing, too. Probably has a better hitbox, too. And while standing, too, by itself is safe. And it's only two frames slower. So, you know. Like I said, if you're gonna, if you're one of, a lot of people like to like throw out wall standing fours from this range, kinda. It's a thing that you see very, if you look for it, you'll notice it happens often. If you're Lars, don't do the wall standing four. You'll fake me later. Trust me. I have a bad habit of doing that kind of stuff too, especially with how much I'm jumping around characters. It's like, wall standing four works like this. It's a generic wall standing four. No, don't think about it that way. All right? Back to uh, Shoe Shine. So Shoe Shine is full crouch down forward one plus two. Shoo, shoo. And when you one input, two hits. You have to commit to both hits. Natural combo, right? No uh, special counter hit properties. But uh, on hit, it's plus one, and he recovers crouch. Right? No, he doesn't. Oh, excuse me. Hold on a second. He doesn't. Wow, I didn't know that. I totally assumed he would recover. He would recover crouch here. Can he hold down? No. He's forced to recover standing. Wow, so he can't just like stay, stay in full crouch and keep forcing a mix-up? Like, make people hesitate because of a while standing four in their face and do another shoe shine? That's crazy. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Well, anyway, I just learned something. So there you go. Talking out of my ass before, but before checking. So shoe shine plus one keeps you standing. Uh, Nothing crazy as far as frame of matches goes, but it's just like a block, uh, a blocked uh, one jab, right? But still, like you're you're at the advantage, you know. Just do what you would usually do when a jab is blocked. You don't have to follow that up either. I mean, he may not have like a special uh, counter hit ten frame screen, whatever. But still, uh, as far as shoe shine on block goes, this is the key thing. It's only negative twelve. So, like, his one low poke, other than down four, I guess, generic down four, that doesn't get him killed on block or shoe shot. So, this is a key move for Lars. The damage is decent. It was, what was it, 24? Right? Boom, right? It is a little bit on the slower side, 18 frames. So, like, you kind of have to make people hesitate to swing at you to really force the shoe shine mix-ups. Other than maybe, like, standing three hold down. But even that is only plus five, right? Let's see what can interrupt Shoe Shine here. Uh, trying to mash it out. Yeah, see? Exchanges with 13 frames, which isn't bad. Because it's not, you know, what 13 frame mid is going to really fuck you up right now? Not too, not too many. 
There's not too many like crazy counter hit things you're gonna have to worry about with the 13 frame gap. Or sorry, a 12 frame gap, 13 frame exchange. As far as mids go. Highs, yes. As far as mids go, cause shoe shine, you stay crouching the whole way. Oh sorry, let me go let me go high high. Watch. Let me block it. See? He stays crouching the whole time. So as far as twelve uh, as mids go. You don't have to worry about any sort of crazy counter hits in this situation, you know, at plus five or even like at negative one. Well, no, let me not say that. At plus five, yes. Not negative one. What the fuck am I thinking? So, you know, this is one example of a way to force it, force the mix up when this hits. I'll be right back in a second. I think my mom needs help opening a pill jar. Because she tries to do shit on her own when she shouldn't be. I'll be right back in a second. The wire to my arcade stick was wrapped around my damn ankle and I just knocked my shit down. I'll be right back. That was my dog scratching on the door. I heard what sounded like a pill bottle being shaking. All right. The freaking cable wrapped around my ankle when I got up and I pulled my case stick out. This thing is taking some serious bumps. It's a good thing it has such a hard cover, hard casing, because it would be if it were plastic, this thing would be freaking wrecked by now. I've done a very poor job of taking care of this arcade stick, <laughs> considering how expensive it is. Whatever, at least I've been using it a lot, so. Anyway. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Do I need to restart the game? Uh-oh. I'm gonna need to restart the game. Unless I broke it. Okay, it's working, so I guess I just need to restart the game. Oh no. Okay, we're back. We're back. Alright, sorry about that. <sighs> okay, so, uh, where did I leave off at? Oh yeah, Shoe Shine. So I stuck the tracking on Shoe Shine. Uh. The second hit tracks well. Oh my god. Yeah, it tracks uh, fairly well, and if I go left, the first hit sometimes, yeah, definitely whiffs, but the second hit keeps him covered. So, I mean, might be able to react in time to low period, but it's, it's a pretty safe bet. So, in general, his tracking from full crouch is solid, his while standing full crouch tracking. Um... 
Yeah. All right. So that's shoe shine, right? Next is sidestep two. Oh yeah, this move. This seems like a good move, but uh, slams down. Pretty sure, yeah, that's a guaranteed stomp. I don't know if that's more damage. But that's also guaranteed. That looks like it's guaranteed. Because that would be a two. 38 damage. 36. Yeah, 33, yeah. The running side seems like it would be the best damage. Oh, never mind. That's way more damage. Sorry, 20 damage? Yeah, this is probably the preferred thing to do. Did I go over down one plus two? Yeah, that's definitely guaranteed. 40 damage. So 40 damage for side step two. Pretty good. Uh, at side step two, 60 frame startup. Uh, negative seven on block. And because it's a sidestep move, it's gonna realign. So yeah, you have to delay your sidestep if you wanna get around it, but if you sidestep early. Oops. Oh my god, stop jumping. See, if you sidestep early. So basically, it's all about time and always. All right, so I don't know if I went through down plus one plus two. Just in case I didn't go through down plus one plus two. I think I did, but I'm not 100%. For some reason, I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, this is like a super unsafe, super risky uh, low, but it is a, a knock down a normal hit. So, right, negative 20 on block. Um, it's on the slow side, so. So there's no uh, tracking at all. Is that force crouch on block? Side step one, no it is not. Side step one is not a force crouch. Side step two, sorry. It is, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> all right, good thing I double check. Yes, it is, uh, negative seven. What's the spacing like? No, leg to seven, but you're right in their face. You're right in his face. So there's no spacing here for you to take advantage of. Looks like you could get it to shadow block. But he moves forward so much. So it's like, even if you get a shadow block, it's like he's right in her face. The range looks decent too. Also, this probably would be like, um, like a, what do you call it? A floor break, right? Like, uh, right? That would probably break the floor. Eight damage. Uh, a little, it's a little damage for, uh, thing to do, though. But whatever. Um, so, yeah, down one plus two does crush highs, but I don't think it's like a instant crush. Coin of this. Oh, he's ducking on frame 20. This is definitely not a high crush. It's not a high crush at all. Right? They'd have to swing really late for it to go into the high and crush. See? So I think the down three is guaranteed. Let's see. Yeah. Down three might be guaranteed. That down three is definitely guaranteed. The full crouch down three. So just mash down three, you will tack on, what was it, nine damage in the end of that. So what was it, uh, 25 plus nine damage. You'll get 34 damage for that low. He might get more, but whatever. 
Yeah, sidestep two. Guaranteed stomp, but uh, it, it has that regular, yeah. Just don't. Just do that one plus two. I mean, maybe the stomp gives him a good okey, does it? No, it does the same thing. So just down one plus two. Just don't be slow. If you're slow, you're gonna get a block, and you're fucked if you get a block. This might floor break on counter hit or something. Maybe not. Um, all right, let me go back to the move list. I gotta switch up to a wall stage after this. Also, let me switch up the music, because as much as I like this song, it takes fucking forever. Any kind of drums. Um, this is... Up back, wait, where am I? Oh, I'm on the bottom, sorry. Scroll up. So, oh, I see what that is. So. It says here you're supposed to be able to go to silent entry off of his stomp. I don't know how to do it though. Anybody know? Any large players around? It says here forward, right? But the way they inputted it, it doesn't make sense. I'm holding forward. Let me see if it's on the move list. Where you at? <clears throat> Stack up. <laughs> Is it only when they're face up? Maybe it's only when they're face up. Let's test. You got it, Milo. Yes. You have to hold the three plus four and then hold four. Did it say, did it show that in the move? There's nothing really indicating that here. That's weird. Yeah, nothing in this indicates that. That's weird, but you have to hold four, uh, hold down, hold three. You don't have to hold down. Just the three plus four and then hold forward. While you're holding the three plus four, so like, there it is. So the spacing doesn't look great in that situation. Uh, thank you, Milo. Let's see what happens if he tries anything. is interesting. Not a big deal, though. Yeah, you absolutely, if you tech or, or hold back to get up, you have to block. You have to block if you get up. Oh, I could just use armor. Yeah. 
So you have to either stay down or hold back. All right. Um, he doesn't have any mids out of that that hit grounded, does he? Okay, that's not that nice. Uh, That's dynamic or silent? Silent, all right. How do you go to silent entry in the neutral? Can you go to silent entry in the neutral? So basically, that's the 50-50, right? It's a, 50, it's a true 50-50, pretty much, sort of, right? A bootleg one, but... Awkward inputs. I don't have to hold it. So you can't sidestep it, but you can interrupt it, right? But if he does the mid, you cannot interrupt it. So he could actually force this uh, as a mix-up. I gotta lower this a little bit. Uh, Cancel out of that stance rather than down three was so weird. I want to see. Yeah. So, are there many moves with that caveat in second? No. Um, so, what you have here is if you commit to the uh, dynamic entry, is that dynamic? No, sorry, silent entry. Uh, I forget, silent is crouched. Okay. No, wait, dynamic is crouched. Silent is just move forward. Is that how it works? No, sorry. Silent is. Yeah, silent is the crouching one, which makes sense because you're sneaking, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. Stupid names aside, um, you could actually pretty much force that as a mix-up. Of course, you also don't have to do anything. You could just... Um, and he kind of backs up and makes a lot of space if you do nothing. Doesn't he have an unblockable from one of these? Well, uh, whatever. Magnifier? Why is the magnifier open? Wow, my desktop is fucked up now. So, this stupid ass unblockable, you just mash two during a supercharge to get it. And now, uh, it is a juggle starter. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not unblockable. Why did I think that was an unblockable? No wonder, man. You know how many, you guys realize how many times I try to swing at this? Thinking, hey, it's an unblockable, and then I was too slow, and I would get launched. Yeah, no, you're right, you're right. I should have known better. 
Holy shit, dude. That move sucks. Well, he has that. <laughs> and it is a launcher, so. Um, negative 18 on block. Alright. So now we got... Certain move special. What the hell is forward three? Oh, dynamic entry. Okay. Um... So now it's going through the side of entry stuff, which I went through last time, but um, let's do it again. So, forward one, two. We got for us. This is. Okay. This is silent entry, right? So, silent entry one is his fastest option out of it at 12 frames, right? And if you're hitting shit like forward one two to go into it, if you connect the forward one two, it's pretty much a frame trap. All of the mids are frame traps if you connect forward one two and go into it. All of the mids, frame traps. I went through like beating all of these last time because the low comes out a lot slower than the mids. The only thing you do to get around that is you could delay the mids yourself. Like that, see? You could delay the low, also, of course, but... See? And then you could, like, even out the timing, but you'll throw away your frame of in the process. If you want to get really gimmicky about it. Um. So... The fast mid, which is solid entry one here, is 12 frames. If he hits me with the forward, uh, cannot sidestep it. Cannot sidestep it. On block, of course, I can interrupt it, but can I sidestep it? Oh, excuse me, I can walk. I can step left. I cannot step right. I cannot walk right. Catches you pretty late though. Uh, and it is negative 10 on the dots. Sorry, that's forward one too. I forgot for Lars, you have to. Yeah, okay, this is what I was talking about. Alright, uh, quick refresher on one thing here. So Lars's uh, jab punish is like 1 2 or 2 1. You might want to stick to 2 1 because it has more range. Lars cannot hold, see? Lars cannot hold one, uh, forward to add range to his one jab because he has a forward 1 2 as a 13 frame move. Uh, which is when I'm going into this uh, stance with So 2-1, which you also cannot hold forward to because he has a forward 2 as a move already. But 2-1 has more range. And it is a high mid. So you get, a, you get a nice little mid check there. So here's a perfect example. It punishes this. While 1-2 does not. Alright. So that's that. Next we got the low. Which as I said... It's like, some people think it's seeable. It is 22 frames, so it's not like seeable as far as frames go, but the giveaway is it's his only low out of this. So you just gotta look for that one animation, that one sound effect. I don't think he makes it sound through anything else. Yeah, he doesn't seem to make that sound through anything else. So, on block around it pretty easily. Mm -hmm. huh. The unblockable is at a rage drive. Mm. Yeah, no, his 10 frames suck in general. What was he, walk left? The problem with committing to walking, even if you can get around the low, is you're going to get hit by all the mids. Including the mid launcher. Yeah, so it covers Lars's left side completely. And like I said before, you can't. You can't step at all and hit. You can't interrupt it, can't step it, nothing. Yeah. 
14 frames, just like the mid launcher. This uh, this is uh, what's it called? Silent, uh, silent entry down forward one. Used to be a bound move. Now it's just kind of like I would call it his safe mid option. If you don't want to go for the unsafe mid options, this is the safe one. On block. What was it negative four? Yeah, negative four on box. You could actually even sidestep after it. Like. Oh, force crouch. It forces crouch. I didn't realize that. Alright, so it's not that great. <laughs> Because uh, if, if, if it left uh, the opponent standing at negative four, then uh, you're less likely, like, if they mash jabs, you know you're going to get around it. But if now if they mash jabs, they might get, like, a wild standing one that who knows how that shit tracks, right? That's a better example. Or if you do the tag two, Lars. Oh. In a negative four situation while standing for uh, tracks. Too slow. So that's silent entry. Next, we got dynamic entry. Uh huh. So, oh yeah, the silent entry low caught me off guard when I started this. Only negative thirteen. I could have sworn that used to be launch punishable. Apparently, it's not anymore. All right, so next we got dynamic entry one. Dynamic entry one, you can hold forward to go into silent entry. See? And uh, it's 11 frames, so it's his fastest option from dynamic entry. And then he has dynamic entry one, two. So one two is safe on block, pushes back. Out of jab range. Not two one though. But still back dash. And then natural combo. But does not jail. It's high high. So that's good damage. Um, so when you do uh, this dynamic entry into silent entry, dynamic entry one forward, it's negative five on block plus six on hit. What's 17 frames? There you go. Yep, negative five. Yeah, negative five. 17 frames is exchanging with that mid, which is 12, right? Yeah, 12. So that's definitely negative five on block, right? So on hits, it says plus six. Uh, 22 frame blow. I tried to test plus six in a situation before, didn't I? Yeah. I didn't have anything I could think of. Uh, I have only low crush for 16 frames. Um, hey, got it. Down back three. He could do the generic down three from standing with down back three. Go figure. There you go. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah. By the way, silent entry low on counter. Here's a juggle starter. As far as what the pickup is. I don't know. 
So yeah, 16 frame exchange. So yeah, definitely, definitely uh, that transition is definitely plus six. What else we got here? So we got one, two is negative six. So next we got dynamic entry two. Sorry. Ah, the mid. This is negative eight on block, plus six on a hit. Counter hit, juggle starter. Well, I don't know what the best combo would be, but that is a counter hit, juggle starter. Check that. We already went through going into that stance at plus five, plus six is not gonna change much. Uh, two's a mid, yeah, plus six. Um. Fuck, that crushes. Fuck it, I'll try it. At 16 frames, but my crush. No, it didn't crush. That's only good at crushing when he's at negative frames. That's what makes it so fucked up. It's not as good as it used to be, obviously. But historically, that move only does a good job of crushing when he's at negative frames. That's what always made it feel like a DP. If you swing at him at even frames, you fucking hit him out of that shit all day long. It's really annoying. See what negative eight is like. <laughs> anyway. Uh, three. So that's two. Negative eight on block. Crumple stun on counter hit. 17 frame startup. How do you, uh, how do you go into this stance? There it is. Down forward three. My music ended. Let's change it up. How's this playlist? Mm, sure. Xeno Gears. So down forward three was uh, one of the good ways to go into this. Uh, let me look up how much it is. Down four plus three, according to this, into uh, dynamic entries plus six. All right, so I gotta hold down. Dyna down four three, hold down to do it. Definitely a good way to set up that to counter hit. Down four three on hit. If they do anything slower than like a jab, look at that. Eleven frames would exchange with that, right? Because it's plus six on a seventeen frame. Yeah. So magic fours would be the only thing. But even then, if you exchange with that move, 
neither uh, character is getting juggled. He's gonna knock out the opponent, and they'll if it's like a magic four, they'll knock him away, and that's that. So this is actually a great frame trap for this. Down forward three, down. It's a dynamic entry too. Let's see how the tracking is. It's like you can't sidestep it at all. Yep, no sidestepping on that. All right, good. Okay, next we got. Uh, I keep holding forward because that's intuitive. This is not an intuitive character. So here's a weird little delayed mid that gives him plus on block, right? Yeah, plus six to plus nine. He could charge that, right? Yeah, he could charge this shit. That's dynamic entry three, right? Can he? No, he can't. Huh. It says that there's three active frames. Oh, okay. There it is. Plus seven. All right. Uh, down back. That's the one that he charges. Down back two, three. Okay. Yeah. Well, whatever. He doesn't charge that. He just always does that weird little delay that makes it look like he's charging for dynamic entry three. Okay. So this one, you could obviously interrupt, right? It's like 27 frames. Ugh. Yeah. So you gotta go your right to get around that. For sure. I don't think I need to test this. It's 27 frames. This is not this is not obviously something that you're frame trapping into, so something that you're using to follow up. Can you hold back on that? Free follow up. I guess forward, forward, three plus four again. Right. Next is dynamic entry one plus two. This is the tilt. Oh, this is the freaking weird ass punch, right? That shit. The juggle starter on normal hits. So this is 12 frames? Damn, 12 frame high launcher. You better expect that shit. Looks like it should be a mid, right? I always thought this was a mid. Huh, look at that. Yeah, there you go. You just got the timer right, but you could go to your right. Which means you could definitely go on block. Definitely cannot go left at all, though. Does that hit him out of the air? Yeah, and it's negative 10 with pushback. Ha, and he recovers crouching. What a shithead. Oh, man. What an asshole. Recovers crouching. Negative 10. You gotta cross that. If you're geese, you can do something with this. If you're geese, you could punish this hard. I don't know about Akuma, but geese could definitely uh, really hurt him for that. And so can Eliza. I don't know if Akuma could combo cross that fireball on normal hit, can he? Uh, he'll definitely be able to combo to a super fireball, I'm sure. Alright, uh, so yeah, that is a high, though, and you could go to your right to get around it. So the thing about the navigation, this is the way that you don't have to duck. 
Because the only thing he has is the grab, and it's like, it's a fucking grab. It's the only grab, you know? Huh. <sighs> oh, What's the input? Oh, my wrist. Ow. Two plus three. Okay. Two plus three. I'll do it right now. Ow. By the way, Dynamic Gertrude 1 plus 2 is also a tail spin move. So, if you hit him out of the air, you'll get a juggle still. You still step that. And of course, it also does the air throw for you. Yeah, but if you're worried about 2 plus 3, remember, I'm using a down forward 3 to go into this. Hold the 3. Hold the 3 and just mash 2. Remember, in second, you could, like, for the uh, multi button inputs, you could just hold one button down and then mash the other. Oh, yeah, my display is off. Why is my display off? See? This is me pressing 2 plus 3 by holding 3 and mashing 2. Always remember that. And even then, during the transition of him going into the stance... Well, maybe not. If you mash during the transition, he's going to do a move. <laughs> I thought there'd be a window where you could press it early. Uh, so yeah, throw's a throw. You don't, you know what a throw is. You don't have to... It is... What is it? 40 damage? No, it's... uh. 23 plus 8, 31 damage. Is that what it is? 40? Can that be teched? Oh no, I was looking at the wrong move. 31 damage is for the air throw. Sorry. That doubles as a shining wizard grab, in case you didn't know. While running two plus four. Yeah, so that's 30 whatever damage, but it's scaled. Because they scale air grabs now, unlike before. Alright, now we got this weird ass shit. So that's dynamic entry. You could step a lot of the options to your right, but I wouldn't recommend it. What the fuck happened to my icons? One second. What the f My desktop is a mess. Holy shit. If you guys saw this right now, you'd be like, Manny, what the fuck? Oh my god, what the hell is going on? Whatever, let me not go through this now. I'll fix that later. Alright, this stupid shit, that fucking, ugh, there's only two options, I ain't know. Didn't he used to have a grab out of this? They took away his grab out of this? He used to have a grab out of this. He definitely used to have a grab out of this. I know, that I'm like really sure of that. And apparently he doesn't anymore. I mean, he's got that, but there was one where he, like, grabbed you by the shoulders and slammed you down like a Kuma's demon flip, almost. Whatever. So, this low is uh, similar to the, uh, what, whatchamacallit, the silent entry low. It's only negative 13. There's no mix up there because he has to land to start up the low. And the mid comes out midair only. See? There's no mix up here.
I really thought he had way more options out of this stupid ass flip. And I would let people scare me when people would just do this randomly. It's one of those things that Lost players like to do because it looks cool to show off. This shit is trash. This shit is fucking trash. Don't use this. I mean, you know, pocket sand it if you feel like your opponent didn't research Lars, but this shit is fucking trash. You can clearly see this. For whatever reason, I just thought he had more options, so I would always fall for this. Like, he's gonna land into, like, some sort of mid-launcher. I'm sure of it, you know? I tried that. It didn't work. See? Nothing. The up forward 3 plus 4, 4 is a counter hit throw. As you can see. Huh, I was wondering if maybe that, was gonna be a, that could be a cool way to break the floor, but I guess it's not even good for that. Whatever. So the mid, if you do connect it, is plus 8, force crouch. The low is plus three, force crowd. And the low is only negative 13 on block. So only a few characters can launch. Yeah, you have to break it with down. Avalanche drop. Yeah, there you go. I knew it. And it looked like, I think it looked like a Kuma's demon flip throw. All right. So yeah, that's all of his uh, standard moves outside of the grass, which I'm going to go through. And then I'm going to switch to the uh, a wall stage. Uh, just to uh, remind you guys, outside of the full moves, uh, you know, his unique moves, he has the generic down four and the down three generic lows from standing. And you don't have to do super high risk shit. These are good lows. You, you watch Korean matches, they use these lows very often for a reason. His don't look like they have as much range as a lot of the other ones, but especially down four, dude. It's a 12 frame low that's only negative two on block and only negative 13. On uh, on block, sorry, it's only uh, it's negative two on hit, so it's not terrible on hit, and it's only negative thirteen on block, so you won't get killed for it by most characters, and you could space it well. He doesn't move forward for it; he stays back where he swings it. So you're back here. So this is always a good tool. So if you're large, you don't have to only go high risk with your lows. You don't only have to go high risk with your lows. You could chip away at people with this, with this, and this. This might not be as good for him because his legs are kind of stubby, but whatever. Oh yeah, back three. I did go through back three last time, right? I hope I did, because I was I stopped at the forward forward move, so I definitely went through back three. Yeah, this is a good whiff punisher. Good whiff punisher, of course. Yes. Okay, so let's go through the throws. Oh, well, before the throws, actually. Let's look at this. We were looking at silent entry before, right? One plus two. And then he goes into dynamic entry when he does that, right? How do you do the unblockable? How do you do the unblockable? Somebody mentioned this earlier. Nobody knows? Thank you, Milo. Back to back two plus three. Oh, which is uh, two plus three is grab. Okay. And that's uh, is that a jungle starter? You have to burn through that to get to it, huh? It's 
like how Dragonov has that tackle out of his rage drive as a kind of gimmicky thing to catch you sleeping. There's like a giant delay there, so you gotta like, if you block that shit, if you're against Lars, don't be asleep at the wheel. You remember, you gotta remember, that's still the stance that he, the stance that he goes into out for that rage drive is still the one that does not have a low. It's just now he had, when he does the rage drive, he gets access to that unblockable. Now, I don't know if he can juggle off because it doesn't look like he can. They're all the way over there. If they hit, if they hit a wall, he could probably follow that up. Um... Yeah, I, I, he might get like a free hit, but not like a juggle. Alright, I'll revisit that when I switch stages. Uh, I think he's got my left. Let's look at this uh, 10 hit. Oh, was that low on the 5th hit? Yeah, low on the 5th hit. Okay. That's all I gotta know. Low on the fifth hit. We don't care about the rest. Um, hostile takedown. Okay, that looks like it should give the Sanoki if he recovers fast. That looks like it doesn't give him much Oki at all. No Oki there, really. Maybe. Oof, that looks vicious. Uh, yeah, this one, uh, I don't think he gets a wall combo off of that, right? He does get a wall splat, but it's like a slump. And then, of course, SHB. <laughs> He's a shining wizard. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. Okay. Let's look at the hostile takedown. So, we're testing throw Oki. First thing you want to test against is wake up kicks. Right? Let's just see how fast my dab comes out. Okay. Let's just do some slow ass. Okay. We're, looks, looks like we're in a good Oki situation here, maybe. Can't do that slow. Ugh, I'm trying to mash down three and I got full cross down three. Play Lars. Sorry to, sorry to let you down. Hold on a second. Hello, thanks for the contribution from one of the videos. A person who is pretty new to fighting games. What character in Tekken would you suggest to start out with? Hydra, Hydros, Hydros. Is that your name? Um. Well, Hydros. Answer me this first. Yes, Kazumi is a solid one. But before I recommend a character, give me a list of a couple of characters that you're interested in playing. If you have any, like, just characters that you think look cool or whatever, give me a list if you have one. Um, Claffy, uh, you must be new to the stream. Sorry, buddy, I don't play Lars. I might play some just to, like, get used to him and check out his moves. But what I do here, if you scroll down, you'll see my YouTube. I go through character move lists on stream, and I usually upload it to my YouTube. So I've been playing Ticket for a while, and I've, like, not done my homework, let's just say. So, Lars is the person I'm going through today. I've gone through most of the casts. So, and I go through in depth, in case you couldn't tell. So, Hydros, do you have a list of a few characters that you think look cool or you might be interested in? If you don't, if you do, let me know. And then I'll follow up with you. So, we have going on here. I have mid wake up kick now, right? Yes. <clears throat> We're still good for that. Oh, that was slow. I can make it come out faster. Ugh. I'm like, the, the recovery is so delayed, I'm shitty at 
and putting it without delay. That's 15. So theoretically, it should work. It's just I can't mash it. Ugh. Well, you know what? I'm sidestepping if, if I don't get the mash. <laughs> I'm trying to mash down three and I'm getting a sidestep. It's annoying. Uh. Well, you know what? If that sidestep right works, what happens if I sidestep right against the low? Nah, okay, thought so. Hey, Hachi, Armor King, the bear. Armor King is no longer around. The bear is still around. And Hey, Hachi is still around. Uh, regular King is in second. All right, so of that list, they're all difficulties in different ways. Uh, <laughs> hey, Hachi, the bear. <laughs> the bear is infamous. So the thing about the bear is you're going to get away, if you play with the bear, you're going to get away with a lot because a lot of people don't know how to fight him, myself included. He will be on my list soon enough. Um, this is so awkward. I can't get a down three input when he recovers. He recovers so slow out of this that I'm having a lot of trouble. Alright, does down back one hit grounded? Let's try down back one. Hold up a second. You meant regular king? Yeah, regular king is good. He's also fairly difficult to use. Okay, so down back one hits grounded, and it does one more damage. Go figure. Uh, 17 frames. Let's try down back one. Um, Heihachi is fairly difficult to use, and uh, he ha he's limited in his options in some ways. He's a very good character overall, but he's quite difficult to use. Um... King is also difficult to use, but you can get by with simple inputs on a lot of stuff with him. There it is. You can mash down back one in this case. Good. Bear, I don't know enough about, like, as far as, like, ease of use, execution-wise. He does have a lot of stances. The thing that worries me about recommending Bear to new players, Kuma. Kuma is just Japanese for Bear, by the way, in case you're wondering. Is, um... He has a lot of gimmicks that will get you by on ignorance, and a lot of players, both good and okay and decent <laughs> and bad, all, I said both, all all levels of play, except like the top levels, and even then some people in the titles probably don't even know what the fuck to do against bears. It, there's a lot of ignorance going on with that matchup, so you might end up forming bad habits if you care about that. It depends on how far you want to go. If you just want to play to have fun and just kind of learn the game, then by all means, pick whoever the hell you want. It's all good. Um, but Bear's definitely one of those characters that might give you some bad habits. Now, King is sort of like that too, but he doesn't have as strong gimmicks. Like, it's not like evasive gimmicks with King. King is just like I have, like, multi-part throws. I have this slow-ass low that crushes highs and starts juggles. and shit like that. It's not like, oh, I'm Kuma. I'm big, but I'm going to go under your mid and launch you. You know, it's not like that. <sighs> eh, no problem. If you just want simplicity, if you want to learn Tekken basics, simple, Kazumi. I did go through her move list, by the way, and I've been using her lately. Um, but Kazumi is definitely probably, and she's a very strong character, too. She's a good one. The thing about it is, to use her well, you have to be good at your basics. So the better you get at, 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 at your Tekken basics, the better, like, Kazumi jumps up quicker in usage, in ease of usage, than other characters would, right? For example, if you get good with your Tekken basics with Lars, you'll, you'll improve, but you'll still struggle in some ways because he's so punishable. Kazumi... She's like safe poke city, just like bop, 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 one, one all day long. Down back four, if they block it, it's only like nine to 12, who cares? You know, down back, but if you counter hit, you get a free ground punch. You know, down forward one all day, the fucking wing flap, right? Down forward one, and then down forward one, two, you know? <laughs> it's, it's like really, really easy character to use. Really fucking easy. <clears throat> and like her execution isn't hard too outside of like it might be awkward to get the some of the juggles if you do the back forward two one stuff that might feel weird because if you do uh for example her hop kick juggle forward three the knee into flying two 
and then back forward two one four, right? That part is easy. But after the two one four, back forward two one four, you gotta dash up, and you might want to end it with back forward two one one plus two. Now dashing into a back forward input might be a little weird if you're completely new to fighting games and Tekken especially, right? So that's that's where it might get weird because you gotta dash up, you gotta go uh uh and then back forward. You know, it's a little weird if you're not already used to it. I wouldn't call it like hard, but it is an awkward thing if you're not used to it. Outside of that, that's as hard as it gets for Kazumi. Yeah, and you'll also learn while running uh, moves because she has a really good while running move. Yeah, so yeah, Kazumi's a good one. All right, so what we have going on with this throw so far, you could beat out both wake-up kicks with a down back one low if you're not slow like I just was. See, he's crouching first. I gotta match faster. Match faster. He's doing it slow. I beat it out before. You guys saw me. Alright, yeah. My beef with this right now is he just recovers insanely slow. So you have to, like, perfectly time your Oki. I don't like that. Let me see if I get something better going here. Okay, so the spacing isn't good enough for that. Trying to get a sidestep right duck. Negative 12, huh? You could definitely OS this. Too bad I can't have it uh, randomized. But you could definitely OS a sidestep into a low parry. Uh, but that's assuming they wake up kick, so that's not really good Oki. Uh, you want to be able to interrupt. What happens if you side move? that mash there it is yeah it is down three if you're better at executing than I am that seems to be the go-to low that'll beat out everything yes. oh yeah. exchange well exchange is better than nothing I suppose this is the one that you don't want to lose to the low is the dangerous one. And you definitely won't lose to that. So we got that a low that beats out everything, right? Yeah, it looks like you're safe to whiff. It looks like he recovers too slow to punish. some range. Ha! Oh, you can launch him. Okay. Not 16 frames. Or 14 catches him. I don't have a 15. Do I? I don't have a 15 that reaches, do I? 
Down back 2 1. Yes, so 14 with distance is is what you get if you hold back in the situation and he whiffs and he whiffs up if you whiffs up down third. That's a pretty safe bet, because that spacing is really good. Not everybody has that, obviously. So down three is a pretty safe bet here. As long as you're not slow at it. Um That looks slow. I'm gonna go. Ugh. This is a slow ass recovery. He's like ducking. You can see it. He's ducking first. I need him to do it instantly. I'm trying to time it now. Smashing is not doing me any good. Hits you. If you stay down, it whips, obviously. But if you try to roll, yeah, either way, it hits you. And then if you hold back, you're at least block. It doesn't whiff. Oh, if you hold back, you get hits. If you tap up, you could probably block it. What was it? How you get up? Tap up. There it is. Tap up. If you hold back, you get hit. If you tap up. Which most people don't do. You block it. I'd say down back 2-1 and down 3 is the way to go after this throw. Definitely. Because even then, if they, they would have to get up blocking low. And then the mid will catch them. And if you get it, if they get it to whiff, it's fairly difficult to punish. The only unfortunate thing is, like, you know, the low won't chase them for holding back. So, you know, that kind of messes up the mix-up. But it works for a lot of situations. Then when you notice that they start to hold back, that's when you can like change it up and chase them down. But you risk it when you chase them down. Remember, the wake up low, Mike Connor hits you or some shit like that. So keep that in mind. But you could start with the down three, down back two, one mix up and then build up from there. If you start landing one plus three throws. Let's be, I'm like talking about this shit like you're going to land one plus three throws all the time. Like this is the old games. And you're not. But you know. Yeah, I don't think all of his other throws don't look like they really give him a joke. Um. We want to get crazy. I don't know who's gonna be. I don't know who's going to be spamming wake up kick in that situation, but... Trying to beat it out. Yeah. So both wake up kicks lose to back 3 4 in that situation. But if they stay down. Yeah. You do not want to. I wouldn't press the advantage here because the positioning is where if you get up in their face, if they stay down with something like this, they're going to hit you with the wake up 3 low and they're going to be face down, feet towards, which starts to juggle a normal hit, clean hit. Like, um, I'll just show you. So, uh, successful, there it is. Successful two throw switch sides, by the way. Uh, not on break, though. Yeah. 
See? And you get juggled. So if you're gonna press that advantage, be real careful. <laughs> you know what might work here actually? Now that I think about it? I'm taking off this wrist thing. <laughs> Never mind, that's no good. I was like, hey, maybe a use for that. Yeah, no. I mean, it beat it beat that out because I was standing, but if I do the low, it jumps over me, and then your back is to me. It's not a great, not a great one. Uh. Yeah, so I would, you know, the two throw, I wouldn't really. This on break. Okay, so no switching sides on the one throw at all. Two throw successful switch sides, but not unsuccessful. Uh, is it up forward? It's up forward. This doesn't switch sides, but it moves off, like, sideways. So this might be a decent way, like, you, you could do this, if you want to do this throw with your back to the wall, they break it, you might get some space created where you could go to your right, because you're going to your right when they break it. And if, the, if it's successful, you, like, move them away from the wall. So, that's a nice little bonus, right? Certainly wouldn't recommend trying to instant shining wizard your way out of the wall. As far as Oki for this goes, uh, we're in the same situation like the two throw. Ha! Nice. All right. Obviously, it's gonna work here, but I just want to see how it connects. And that is face up, that's not face down like it is with the true throw. Okay, definitely don't do that. Not a whiff punish. <laughs> I was like, hey, maybe a use for that. Nah, it's not a whiff punish. They could wake up, kick for free, and then the low at least, and then still block us. So that's just dumb gimmicky shit. Uh, I mean, it might not be the worst thing if they stay down. The low will hit them, right? But... And it does go over the uh, mid. Well, the kick did. Maybe not the low. Uh, once again, they could whiff, wake up, kick, and block low. So, yeah, no, it's a uh, something to consider. Pocket sand, if you will. But in general, you got no Oki there. Definitely, look at that. The spacing is even worse now. But that does happen. This might be oh man, that sucks. Okay, so you can put a little extra dash in there, a little dash like a little deeper. Ooh, look at this! The spacing makes wake up kick. Whip. Ah, if it made the low whiff, I would say that's a good option because you can 
can make him block the mid and be at plus. Mm. Yeah, no, gimmicky shit. But the low and the mid whiff, if you do the runny slide. That's something to consider. That does not happen with the other command grab. With this, he's still too close. The wake-up kick will hit me. But uh, with the Shining Wizard grab, he's faced further. He recovers a little slower. It's not bad. All right. So that's his throws. I don't think there's any Oki off of... Uh, what's it called? No, not that. Uh, God, how do I get this? It's not like King. Yeah, that's like even further. That's you're getting crazy now. So there's no real Oki there. Most people, when they get knocked away like that, they're gonna tech and then they're gonna move around. They're not gonna get a wake up kicking from super far away. And the same thing probably for the actual running throw. But the thing is about the running throws, I don't think you could tech that. They're probably gonna try to get up and move though. That's for sure. Like, quick side roll? Yeah, can't. You cannot. But, that could happen. And you don't want that to happen. Yeah, that's definitely, that definitely could happen. So, keep that in mind, too. Alright, so the last thing left with Lars is to go through some wall stuff here. I've been doing a very poor job of going through wall stuff for other characters. A lot of them lately, so... I should definitely do it for Lars, because I feel like he has some... some interesting stuff at the wall. So first of all, forward 2 4 is your fastest wall splat. 12 frames. But I mentioned this before. That, um... Uh, and it is good damage, 32 damage. But I mentioned this before, it's high, high, can be ducked, and it's negative 12, I think, on block, right? So he also has a 16 frame, 4 frames slower, mid-high, that can be ducked, but is not unsafe on block. It's safe on block, unlike forward too far. Right? 33 damage. Looks like it was it. Damn. What the hell? What the hell? I had it before. There it is. Jeez. falling out of it so it doesn't work at point blank but that was definitely it right there okay oh man oh 
Forward, forward. Anybody know any wall combos for Lars? Cause it's not looking great. I thought Lars was like the wall combo king. Sixty-one. Hmm. Oh, that's exactly what I did already, Milo. Damn, that sucks. He used to be like the wall combo king. What the fuck happened, Lars? Maybe letting him fall would get it. See, it looks like you should get him, right? Be able to do it. It's a shiny wizard. I tried that. It's a shiny wizard. He fell out of it. Made me off of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. See, he just fell out of it. <laughs> so, like, you get the shiny wizard off of a wall carry where they hit a little higher, but off of a wall splat, he just fall out of the throw. I really thought, I mean, he probably does. You probably have to look up a, a Lars, like, video to get the best wall combos. But I guess, like, you know, like Milo said, the easy mode wall combo is uh, you get a wall splat, down back 2-1, forward 1 plus 4. And that, that sets itself up so the shoulder hits as a low wall hit. If you want another easy one, wall splat, forward 4, 1-2-1, one, one, whatever, the string. Forward 4, 1-2-1, one, one, the whole thing combos. It does not come off of that, apparently. There it is. Okay, just don't delay it. Without any delay, the whole thing combos. But it's one point less than down back to one shoulder. Poor Lars. Alright, and then, like I said, back to three for like a mid option for wall splat and forward to if you need something faster forward to four up close and then he also has shit like this Of course, he also has back 3-4 for a wall splat, mid-high, with more range. That looks good. Hold on a second. There it is. Ha! Back 3-4 is the juice. <laughs> Look at that shit. 
I know he had something crazy. Uh, just like forward two four though, it is a negative twelve mid high that could be ducked. Uh, well, mid high in this case said high high seventeen frames in this particular case. But if you get the back three four, you get a nice back dash in there. Back dash down forward one instant while uh, instant shining with. You just need enough spacing to get him to float and hit the wall for the Shining Wizard. That's why. And in general, if you walk carry with Lars... Try to run up and do the Shining Wizard grab at the wall into the shoulder, just like I just did there. If you do like a general wall carry, that's basically your general wall combo. If you feel like they're going to land too low, like they're going to slump down too fast for the running throw, then run up, down, back, 2-1, shoulder. Off of a wall carry situation. Like, I oh, fuck, I don't really Lars combo, so it's going to be weird. Uh, but, um... Like, fucking... Whatever. Let's, let me try to just... Do some whack shit just to show you. See? In general. So if you walk carry, they float into the walls. You know, there you go. You do that. And if you think they're going to be, like, uh, too low, then down back 2-1 like I just did there. Like, uh... Right. Oh. I thought the shoulder would work. Down back 2 1 is a little more reliable if they hit low and you feel like they're gonna slide out slide out of your running grab. But in general, you want the running grab and then uh, the shoulder. When you do the running grab, hold the four down and then input forward one while holding four. Right? And then you'll get the shoulder right after. You can just mash it out while holding four. And then if you do down back 2 1, it's a shoulder. Same thing, but hold the one and input the four. Down back 2 1, hold 1, forward 4 while holding 1 the whole time. Make that shit reliable. Don't drop it because it's a lot of that shoulder in the end is always 16 damage because of the scaling. The scale resets because it's a low wall hit and Lars gets that automatically on that shoulder because it's gifted to him because that's just the way he recovers out of his strength. Um, he used to have fucked up shit in tax. Uh, so yeah, that's like, you know, that's the big stuff. So the big, the big wall splash to look for, forward 2-4, back 2-3, and especially back 3-4. Those are the big ones. Those are the big ones. Back 3-4 is the big one. See? Oh, 60% rescale, always, for 16 damage on that shoulder. Yeah. I don't know about any Oki. I think the shoulder fucks up any Oki, so I don't think he gets any Oki off of that. You probably have to look up some sort of, like, actual Lars player guide <laughs> for o for any crazy Oki. He might have something off of some unique setups. I don't really know. Plus, he probably sacrificed too much damage. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for Lars. I mean, you guys know anything that I might have missed? <coughs> oh, okay. like I used to. That used to be something that would give you a free follow-up stat animation. Yeah, I think that's it for Lars, guys. I can't think of anything else. Like, you know, like, other than, like, hunting down specific crazy wall Oki, which, I don't know. It's a good position to be zero in. 
I said, you know. Uh. Oh yeah. something about this at the wall that makes it combo in certain situations but I don't really know how to do it like if he stays down let's turn off wake up yeah see at the wall this is what I was talking about with this move last time I streamed during part one when they're down at the wall, maybe it's only facing up, facing up. I don't know, but down three one is a combo. Always, if it hits them grounded, it will combo. So remember that if you want some nice wall pressure, especially since I think you recover pretty fast. Like they could tech, but you recover fast. But it, it'll combo for a nice little chunk of damage there. That's about all I could think of for Lars. All right, well. Hope you guys learned some uh, good shit. I know I learned a lot there. Uh, and I guess I'll call it because it is whatever. I'll host automatic. Automatic Jibbo, the man. But thanks for tuning in, you guys. I'll upload this to the YouTube. If you scroll down, you'll see the YouTube. And uh, next on the list, I don't know yet. I had a few uh, characters in mind. I don't know who it's going to be just yet. Maybe I'll surprise you guys. But hopefully uh, within a, uh, a week or so. I'm also going to start streaming a new game. I haven't decided which game yet, but I'm going to start streaming something new on the side. But uh, I'll be back soon. You guys all have a good night. And uh, take it easy. Stay warm.